What's going on everybody? It's Jonathan here with Drone Academy again and today we're taking a look at the brand new DJI Flight Simulator software. Now this is not your dad's flight simulator. This is not the... that was cheesy. Man, I'm really sorry. So this isn't the flight simulator software that was bundled with the DJI Go app. This is a brand new standalone simulator that is PC only for right now and it is pretty good. This is something that DJI announced the last week at the Airworks conference here in Dallas, and they gave us an opportunity to play around with the full enterprise version. Now, that one's a little bit more advanced than the one you can download today. That one has some additional aircraft and has some scenario-based simulations that are really neat, like tower inspections, power line inspections, even search and rescue. Now, you can't do that with this software. This is specifically designed with two modes, free flight, and entertainment. We'll talk about those a little bit more in just a bit. Now this video is going to be focused on the free flight modes. We will do another video with the entertainment modes. We were going to do them both here, but it was just going to get too long and crazy. So we're focused on the free flight modes here today. Now, like I said, this software is specifically limited to the consumer grade aircraft. So you're looking at the Sparks, the Mavics, the Phantoms and the Inspire 1. If you want the Matrix 210 or the Inspire 2 or any of the other aircraft, you've got to wait for the Enterprise solution that's going to come out sometime early next year is what DJI is telling us. We don't have a price on that yet, but we're hoping that they will announce that here shortly. But still for now, this is available today and it's free. So it's a great opportunity to get your hands on the sticks, get more familiar with the controls if you're a newbie. And even if you're a seasoned operator, it gives you an opportunity to try maybe some riskier maneuvers without worrying about destroying your aircraft. All that being said, let's select the Mavic 2 Zoom since that one gives us some additional capabilities. And you can see the different scenarios here. There's a city scenario, which is beautiful and fun to fly around in. We'll take a look at all these as well as the island, which is a little bit more open and also very beautiful. And then there's the hangar, and this one is pretty simple. So we'll start out here, and it's not a lot to it. It's an indoor scenario, but it gives you an idea of what you have here in the flight simulator. So you can see that you're starting here with your aircraft, gives you the controls, tells you what you need to do to spin up your motors. And then all you have to do, like you would expect, is give it a little throttle and you're gonna lift off. So you can see immediately, even though this is a very simple environment, the graphics are very good. This is built on the Unreal Engine, much like a lot of the newer video games. So DJI does recommend that you have at very minimum a GTX 1050 Ti or higher graphics card. They recommend a 1060 or 1070 and a 1080 obviously is optimal if you can get it. I did try running this on a 950M and it loaded, but it was noticeably slow. So I wouldn't recommend it on anything less than a 1050. So in addition to the pilot point of view, you saw just a second ago where you were looking at the aircraft, this mode most closely represents what you're gonna encounter on a day-to-day -day basis looking at your controller and your device. But this is the view that I like to use most of the time. And it's a full aircraft FPV, full screen now, it's not as common as what you would see on a daily basis, but I think given the size of your screen, it's gonna give you the best experience when flying in the simulator. Now, like I said earlier, this is a fairly simple environment. There's really not a whole lot to explore, but it's fun to get used to the controls. And you can see that you actually have full pitch, yaw and roll, throttle control. You actually have gimbal control as well. So it's exactly as if you were flying a real aircraft. Well, almost exactly. I mean, even though you're indoors in a warehouse, you still have full GPS lock. So it's not exactly like you were flying a real aircraft, but it's pretty close. And there are a few other limitations, like you can go in here to the aircraft camera settings. You can adjust or remove the grid, but you can't change the camera settings in the exposure, shutter speed, any of those. And of course, all these other menus are completely grayed out as well. And while you do have this moving map down here, unlike a regular aircraft, you can't blow it up to take over the full screen. So 
There are a few limitations in the simulator, but you do have access to the zoom, which is really neat for aircraft that have zoom capable lenses. For instance, the Mavic 2 Zoom and the Mavic 2 Enterprise on the Enterprise Edition software. Again, in this scenario, there's not a whole lot to do. Like I said, it's a small environment and it's really more just to get used to the controls and pop around a little bit, maybe if you wanna see about how to do interior inspections. The one thing that everybody asks is what happens if you run into something? Well, if you run into something, it lets you know. And just like that, you're back in the air, respawn, aircraft is in perfect condition, unlike in real life where you are out of several thousand dollars and maybe weeks of time. But like I said, that's a great thing about the simulators. It gives you an opportunity to try things in a way that you don't have to worry about crashing or totaling an aircraft. So let's pop in and take a look at the city environment. This one's really neat. It's actually well built. It's quite beautiful in my opinion. And it gives you an opportunity to do some really interesting flying. So once again, you see those on-screen cues letting you know how to spin the motors up and you're up and flying. Now, unlike the small warehouse scenario, this one is much, much bigger. And the flight physics right away, you can see they're looking at the aircraft closely mimics what you would see flying an actual drone. You even have the capability to take it out of GPS mode, put it in Addy mode, and you can see there as I do, I'm starting to get a little drift in my controls. Now, you can actually do some fun things with the environmental conditions as well that we'll talk about in a bit where you can actually kick up the wind and see the impact that that has on your ability to fly in Addy mode. And in my opinion, being able to control an aircraft in Addy mode or in a GPS denied environment is one of the most crucial skills you can develop as a drone pilot. So this is a great opportunity to do that once again without the risk of damaging an aircraft in a real world scenario. So you can get up here, you can see, like I said before, the city is really cool looking. Their buildings seem to be designed in a way that beg you to fly through them or near them. Uh, there's a lot of open gaps which, like I said before, if you do operate in an urban environment or you want to test your skills of being able to fly through things or in things, this is a really cool place to do that. And as I mentioned before, with a GTX 1070 graphics card on this one, you can see the difference in the low and the high. In fact, DJI did a great job of rendering these even in the low quality environments. The main difference you can tell is in the shadows and some of the detail areas. But even in low, you're gonna have a great environment flying around it. And as I was flying around, I noticed that DJI made this environment seem absolutely boundless when in fact it does have a very definite border. And if you encounter that border, you'll see this little mesh net. And if you decide you wanna to try to go through it, well, it'll knock you out of the sky and respawn you nearby. All right, now that we've taken a look at the city environment, let's look at the island environment, which I think is arguably a bit more beautiful and certainly more functional from a training standpoint. So again, as you take off here, you can see the standard pilot view and I'll do a little pre-flight check here, make sure all my uh, flight controls are working the way they're supposed to. All right, so now that we are up in the air, let's cycle through to the first person view and take a look at what I think is one of the most interesting things in this scenario, the wind turbines. Now, these wind turbines are a really neat element, I think, because they showcase the level of attention to detail that DJI has tried to incorporate into the simulator. As we start to zoom in a little bit around it, you can check out the tip of the cone as well as the base of the fan blades themselves. And you can actually see the level of corrosion that they've added to that. And it's also neat because you can back out to one of the other views and you can see here actually how difficult maintaining visual line of sight with your aircraft is, which I think was kind of neat. Moving back to the first person view of the wind turbines themselves, you're able to actually see the benefit of the zoom capability of this aircraft as we zoom in and take a look at the corrosion itself. And this system actually even allows us to take pictures and video, uh, or at least simulate it, it doesn't store it anywhere, but you're able to, to practice that skill set as well. Now I wanna transition a little bit and take a quick look at another one of the neat features that's only available in the island scenario, and that is the simulator control. Now in here, you can actually adjust the control of the aircraft as far as which flight controls you have. You can adjust the difficulty of various types of flight control and activities. 
You can increase the interference to your controller. You can adjust the wind and direction and speed. And these actually will impact your aircraft performance in real time. So if you put it in Addy mode and increase the wind, you will actually see your aircraft begin to drift. I think this is a neat little touch that DJI put in there. And certainly if you're practicing in Addy mode, which I highly recommend everybody do, um, this is a great way to do that without risking your aircraft. So the last thing that you can adjust here in these settings is the environment itself. And I think this is kind of neat because it allows you to create visually, at least a very unique environment to train in. You can see here with the clouds, you can adjust the density, the height of the cloud ceiling, all of these things that give you a, a unique environment. Next, you can see that the light source, and that's the sun itself. You can actually change where it is in the sky, how high it is in the sky, how bright it is. And then the last thing is the weather, and that actually allows you to adjust precipitation. And you can actually see here how the visibility is decreased by adding some rain there. Oh, added a little bit too much. And as we explore the environment a little bit more, you can see here some beautiful thermal vents, nice detail in the water, and this bridge. Now, I love this bridge. Just like the wind turbines earlier, this bridge gives a great real world scenario of something you might actually be doing in your day to day operations. And again, the level of detail here from the way the concrete is stamped to if you look in the center of the screen, you can actually see the shadow of your aircraft against the pillar. Now, I think that is a really neat touch. Of course, wanting to ensure that the environment was as realistic as possible, you can even actually look up underneath the bridge. And in another touch of realism, underneath the bridge, we're actually getting a weak signal so you can see that our video and controls are actually degraded a little bit. Now, as anybody who has flown before knows that if you've got a weak signal, you got to move the aircraft or move your body. And DJI gives you the option to do either one. You can actually come out of flight mode by pressing and holding the shutter button, and you can actually run around the island, maybe to a higher point where you can get a better signal. And I don't know if this has too much use in a real training environment, but it's kind of fun to do and reminds me of some video games of when I was a kid. Now, before we fly home and land, I wanted to take just a minute to showcase some of the trees. Now, in this environment, the trees are mostly just for show, but in the Enterprise version, they do pay a little bit more of a factor as you're working through your search and rescue missions. All right, so that is the island environment. Even though we've got about 10 minutes left of battery, let's go ahead and bring it back in and land it. All right, y'all, so those are the free flight modes in the new DJI simulator. Here in our next video, we're gonna take a look at the time trial as well as the tunnel run, which are the entertainment modes of the simulator. But in the meantime, tell us what you think about the demo version. Is it worth the zero dollars that DJI is charging for it? We certainly think so, but we wanna hear what you have to say.